Hoop Dreams, the podcast, an Unlearning Network production. Man, joining us today. <laughs> he hails from Reno, Nevada. He started his Hollywood career on the set of Desperate Housewives. Everybody know what that show is, where he got his first break as a writer. Now, that AG led to producing and writing roles on hit shows such as Graceland. Come on now. Queen of the South. I'm still watching this yes. one, Grey's Anatomy and Dynasty. <laughs> My wife loves that. He's currently working on Naomi for the CW Network and Soul and Fury. Get this. Not with one legend, two legends, Debbie Allen and Terrence Howard. He has multiple shows in development with stars such as mm -hmm. Matt Barnes, Camelo Anthony, Peter Dinklage. We love to welcome to the show the one, the only, Jason Gazelle to the Hoop Dreams Podcast. I'm Will Gates, and that's my dog. Arthur AG. Welcome to the show, Jason. Appreciate you being here, man. How you doing? I'm good, man. Thank you. I want to bring you guys to meetings and just <laughs> have that. Have that happen before I come in. That's like, yeah. I feel like I'm running out to like fight Mayweather or some shit. That's, hey, listen, we don't even need music. That's, that's, that's right. That it would be your hype, man, any day, any day. I well, you that. know, Jason, man, um, goodness, you're like near our age. So we got to kick yeah. the show off this way, man. When did you see Hoop Dreams? And, and tell us about that time. You guys were in the Mecca of Hoop in Chicago. I was in the armpit of Hoop in Reno, Nevada. And so it was a very mm. different environment, you know, like um, certainly, but watching that doc was so just instrumental and like uh, impactful at a time where I was playing Hoop and uh, getting recruited um, to play ball in college, getting re recruited to run and, kind of figuring it all out. And so, yeah, that doc hit me at the perfect time <laughs> where I was living what you guys were living um, right. at one tenth of the, the impact and stakes and uh, pressure, but still was um, really profound to watch you guys kind of go through it. And it was, it felt so honest in a way that had never been done. And I think being from Reno not having that exposure to yeah. like that level at that age. It was like, we go to like college basketball games with my dad, who's a professor there. Uh, and that was kind of the level because we didn't have a pro team. And so to see these kids that looked like me at my age that yeah. were treated like these pro athletes or just that had all this like shine on them, it was just like, it was wild for me to watch. It just kind of opened up that world in a big way, big way. Yeah. So, <laughs> Um, it's so cool sitting down with you guys. It's real. So. It's our pleasure, man. It's our pleasure. Well, you know, yeah. our, our show is a little bit different. People come on here and they think it's about us, but actually it's about you. So yeah. we want to dive into the Jason yeah. origin story, man. Take us back to your, your early years. Where were you born? Obviously, we know you were born in Reno, but what yeah. was your neighborhood like and you know, and, and, and how was it growing up? Yeah. Uh, you know, I was put on a plane from the hospital in Vegas and given up for, for adoption. Really? Uh, to my parents in Reno and grew up in a like 98% upper middle class high school. And my parents are five foot white people. And so there wasn't a day where they sat me down like you're adopted. And I like I don't remember that traumatic day because it just wow. was a thing that ever you know, I just you know, it wasn't a day to me. I'm mm -hmm. sure it happened somewhere along the way, but it wasn't that impactful moment that I even remember. And so, you know, I think like for me growing up in Reno was called all the names because mm -hmm. having white parents and not stereotypically looking like any one race necessarily. Right. They just didn't quite know where to hit me. And so I just got the wide spray of everything. And then mm -hmm. oddly, because I didn't have that association, not knowing myself, what nationality I was growing up. Um, I didn't know to be offended 
mm. by one thing or another. And so in a weird way, I was a little bit protected in a unique way where I didn't know to be offended. I didn't know that's why I was being pulled over. I didn't know if someone was looking at me in a store, it wasn't right. to offer me help. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. cause I didn't have that like older figure in the house or not even around really till college um, to inform me about the world that I was living in. Just so it was really unique experience. And I think, I guess maybe shielding me from some shit, yeah. but also maybe didn't prepare me for some shit. So it's like this weird kind of balance, you know? And I think like, uh, probably worked out in a good way that it was, you know, it was flying over your head. It was like, what, yeah. am I supposed to be insulted? Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And, and I think like, uh, that not ability, but just like, um, bouncing from groups to group and mm -hmm. not necessarily having an allegiance or a flag um, and being fluid like that, like in a lot of ways served me in my career now or served me like just being a person in the world, uh, right. that doesn't have that kind of allegiance, but then you're missing that allegiance and that, and so in some ways it's isolating and lonely, but in some ways it's like, you don't feel that fence. So you don't feel like that as much, mm -hmm. um, but still are acknowledging that people are treating you a certain way because of the way you look. So it's really, it's like, it's been this journey, you know, like uh, finding out later on in life that um, I'm part black, part Cuban, and then starting to understand shit in a different way. And people around me, um, yeah. they're black. Like we knew you were like that, that you were questioning that. Like you, you were always one of us. And like <laughs> my wife, who's like see-through white, like uh, will always like acknowledge, like walking by, Black dude, there's always like a head nod. And she's like, yep. what is that? You know, it's just always like, <laughs> what's up? What's up? And it's just like, so shit like that that's always Chase happened in my whole life. Nod. Yeah, it's just like, you know, and, and so for me, like, that shit would happen my whole life. And then, you know, it was just, I didn't know to base it on anything else. And so right. uh, naive, but maybe in, in a dumb way. So it's been an exploration lately for sure. Man. You know, and you guys say it's not about you, but so much of what you guys did impacted in a little interesting way like it wasn't for a group you know what i mean like everyone touched into it which yep. to me resonates in a big way just because of my experience like it's like here's a thing that i don't know shit about chicago growing up in reno i know right. of it and the who people that come from there you know just being a, a student of the game but like um to see it and, and it's just a universal thing that everyone felt and understood and um, and you know, hey, hey yeah. Jason, it's funny you say that because that's how I look at it. I look yeah. at it like it, it wasn't a black story or just yeah. two uh, two inner city kids because you know that there, there's Mexican kids, his uh, yeah. uh, Spanish kids, Latino kids. I mean, every ethnicity young kid plays basketball, yeah. and if you're not in that one percent and living in the suburbs, you can relate to our story yeah. <laughs> immediately. And just caring about something that not everyone understands more than anything in the world. And yeah. then that knee was like devastating to me. And yeah. like, cause everyone knows that pain of wanting something so bad and having something that doesn't have to do with your effort, doesn't have to do with how much you put in with work and your attitude, mm -hmm. nothing. It's just a thing that happens. That you don't have control over. I think that, and, and really like, those type of things, and I'm sure there's a handful of them along the way, it really like informed my writing, I think, like, mm -hmm. like to find things that, because that, like I said, it was so impactful on me. I'm not just like uh, saying that to say it, being here, but uh, what you guys did was so impactful. I think like understanding you could be universal with uh, a feeling or an idea that everyone can relate to, because I think so much of our business is putting you in boxes of what you can do. And right. to me, if you tap into that feeling of hope and loss with no fault of your own, that's something that no matter who's in it or who it's for, everyone can click into. So um, yeah. it's not about you guys, you say, but a lot of what I'm doing is. So um, it's, it's really cool. Yeah. Well, I want, I want to tap into what you said just a little bit earlier too, uh, just about navigating, you know, home life. And, and, and it's interesting because even we know you're from Reno. You say you don't yeah. know Chicago. Most of us don't know Reno. I mean, like, like yeah. we think of Vegas, 
we go to yeah. the big lights. Right, you know, we right. go to Las Vegas. Um, yeah. But how did you navigate in terms of, I know you said earlier, it wasn't a big deal per se, but did at any moment, did you feel different because your parents were white? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it's it, at that time. I haven't been back in a while, but was very much shotgun in the rear view, back of a pickup kind of vibe. And um, like I said, was called all the names, and mm-hmm. so certainly felt like other uh, in all the ways, you know. And, and mm-hmm. that um, luckily, I think my parents uh, were like the poster of of adoption with Absolutely. providing like support through that and understanding through that and just being um well traveled so they knew uh, mm-hmm. the world that we we all live in as opposed to just that little circle there but um and you guys know this too that the cool thing about sports is suddenly you go from that derogatory term in school to yep. oh that's the captain of the team or that you know and so i think because of sports i suddenly as kids were getting older and meaner, um, that shined through. And so it was this weird kind of lucky, again, thing that, uh, avoided a little bit because sports was how I, how I was identified. It wasn't Mm. the color of my skin. It was just like, he's that. And that was it. And so, um, yeah, it was interesting. That's so true that you say that sports really is kind of like the equalizer of life. It like balances out. A yeah, lot of things. Sure. Now, don't get me wrong. Yeah. It has its own headaches, but it balances yeah. out a lot of things. And speaking of sports, man, we hear yeah. that you were an athlete growing up, track and field, cross country. Yeah. Talk <laughs> about some of those early days and how you got into the sport. Uh, I think it was just uh, like my mom was in finance and was always stressed out. And so got into running. Uh, it's just a way to like um, wake up every morning maybe and get through it. But um, something became part of our ritual. My parents were these kind of ultra marathoners and and like marathoners and would travel a lot and go to races. And so it just mm-hmm. kind of became part of what we did. And I um, was really fortunate to have this amazing coach and work with the Junior Olympics. And so um, we had access to all this amazing stuff and was uh, quickly kind of pulled into those ranks a bit. And uh, became this kind of runner and, and now having kids, I have no idea how my parents faci- like facilitated that yes. those weekends. Cause like yes, I said, Rio's yes. not the sports <laughs> kind of destination. And so it was like throwing down the seats in the station wagon so I could sleep and they get up Saturday morning at four and drive to the Bay area or drive to, um, SAC mm-hmm. or wherever, just to get the, that competition. And, uh, we'd be on the road a lot and me, I'm just in the backseat chilling, like, uh, I'm not even understanding what they're sacrificing. And so um, it be, it was a lot, and it was a lot too. Like it was, you know, competing at, at that level, that young, um, I think pushed me in ways that I probably wouldn't have been pushed and uh, helped me with my mentality now as I approach, as kind of how I approach my business, but then also uh, burnt me out <laughs> by the time I was a sophomore in high school because I've been doing it since I was nine and on that um those, those national teams and it was just like ran my fastest mile as a sophomore and was getting college looks and and mm. um at that point but basketball was always this fun thing that i did in between the running um just to stay in shape and, and then you could do three sports you have to pick one as a sixth grader what you're going to specialize in like now like and um yeah and, and again in reno the the quality of talent there made it easy to be a runner that could also be on a basketball team. So, um, yeah, but that was a big part of growing up for sure. We want, we want to, um, jump into your high school, yeah. you know, where yeah. did you go? What was high school like for you? Cause I don't, you know, when AJ and I was in high school, we're going to just assume that it is not Chicago is not like, a you know, maybe. Yeah. a little different, you <laughs> yeah. know, but we, yeah. we, we, you got to give us some stories, Jason. We want, we want some fights, you know, we want to know, you know, who you was trying to get with, who you was dating, <laughs> you know, the, we want to know the curiosities. What, what was high school life like for you? Since you went to TV and film and all of that, pick a movie that had a high school in it that your school kind of similar, that was kind of like. I would kind of say Teen Wolf. 
Like, <laughs> really? <laughs> for me, for me, like, everyone was all kind of doing and saying the same shit. Yeah. And I felt like this fucking, diff- uh, like, this different thing, but was good at hoop. Like, <laughs> I think that'd be my, that might be my memoir to the title. Because, <laughs> but that's kind of what it was. Like, everyone was of the same mind. Like, there was not a lot of diversity in terms of thought or, or what people were into it was all just kind of the same shit. And so uh, going from that to college was like, oh shit, this is like, this is different, you know, and mm. uh, really opened my eyes quick, but it was safe. It was dope. It was like safe. And like, I was all about uh, running and then in, in the high school hoop. And like I said, like was quickly identified as um, a guy that can play basketball. And uh, mm. at that school, it was that stereotypical, like uh, jocks and, or, you know, like, um, but like I said, moved through all the groups. And so it was never identified myself based on how other people identified me, but mm-hmm. rather my mm-hmm. interactions with people. And yeah. so, um, it was really fluid through, um, the different groups in high school and, and enjoyed it and had fun and loved playing basketball. And, and that kept me focused on getting shit done that I had to get done, but, um, pretty uneventful maybe. I don't know. Maybe a little different than, than y'all's experience. <laughs> I guess the question becomes yeah. is, were you the wolf? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> said, of course. For sure. Yeah, that's 100%. I was like, this is different, yeah, but he's good. good at basketball. So right. I guess he's good, you know. And that's so funny. Oh, if you could play sports good, oh, you, oh, you cool. You you with the cool. It's, it's like, wait a minute. Yeah. I could play sports yeah. and I'm a nerd, motherfucker. Like, what are yeah. you talking about? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. You can be all the things. It's funny how we we put you in those boxes, though, of what you are, you know. But you got to give us a story. You got to have a high school story in you. Give us one of them stories. A couple things, like the probably most eventful thing, like uh, Reed High School was like across town and like games were always tight and always like technicals and just like just hated each other. It was that thing. and we were playing there and a bunch of kids went on our bus and threw all of our backpacks over the fence at Reed when we were playing. So came back and all our shit was gone, but that's like Reno shenanigans. Like it's not some shit like right, right. Wild. You know what I mean? Like that was kind of the extent of it and getting in trouble. Wasn't like you were ever worried about your life. And so the stakes were so low uh, and so kind of insulated um, a big like the trouble was we and I didn't drink at the time. My parents made it very clear like if you want to be an athlete, you can't drink. So it was like okay, right? I want. It was never and so I just right, did, you right. know didn't. So I didn't get into a lot of trouble because so I was like, well, I want to do that. So why would I do that? It's just it was very simple to me somehow. And uh, hopefully I get that right with my kids at some point. Um, how that was explained to me because it just you know and then so. I didn't get in too much trouble. Just kind of did what I was supposed to do. And, and sports was so great about it. Uh, just keeps you focused and, and holds you accountable to have to show up the next day and not be fucking around so you can mm-hmm. perform, you know? So um, it wasn't that crazy, man. Yeah. You know, I know about Reno if I mention this. I'm glad them kids didn't get on the bus and throw y'all book bags in the Truckee River. I know. You'd never see it again. Like, <laughs> and if, if you were picturing like a nice river, it's just like. Right, it's not, right. Yeah, it's we like used to see this Truckee River. <laughs> yeah. As I going to say, y'all got to describe that for me. What, what's the Truckee River? <laughs> I mean, at certain times of the year, it was nice based on how much snow yeah. came in at Tahoe. But other times, it'd just be this kind of trickle down that would catch trash, I guess. Yeah. On the way Almost down, like but. it looked like a uh, one of those uh, river things that they have in L.A. You right. know, like yeah, uh, yeah like both that. concretes yeah. on both sides, but it has like a drain, mm-hmm. so it's it's all the water runoff yeah. from the mm-hmm. rain and stuff yeah. like that, and it pushes the trash and stuff down. Yeah, Gosh. and they actually did a lot of work uh, recently. I think um, like 10, 10, 15 years ago, where they kind of redid it all through downtown. It looks really nice and added some parks and stuff. Um, yeah, it's funny, Will, because Reno is is actually in a circle. Mm-hmm. So, so if you're driving around, yeah. you're gonna always be on what's that McCarran McCarran yeah. Road? McCarran, yeah. McCarran yeah. Road can take. <laughs> In other words, you're saying I can't get lost. Can't get lost. Impossible. 
Very <laughs> possible. <laughs> Very I mean, you weird. might. I, I, mean, I don't know you, but if you do, <laughs> that says something about you for sure. But no, yeah, no, but, no, I won't get lost. I won't get lost. Yeah. So it was that. It was a bubble, though. It was that little circle of bubble. contained thought, contained experience. Yep. Um, that felt very safe growing up. And so um, as much as I kind of laugh about, like it was great growing up and, and felt supported and safe and all the things you hope for your kids. So um, it was good. You know, Jane, I, I, I did want to um, switch it up just a little bit on you too, mm-hmm. particularly from this aspect, we're dealing with a lot of mental focus and we have, you know, a lot of, you mm-hmm. know, high schoolers and um, college kids listen to the show from a mental aspect you know, during our time, and as AG and I, we talked about this before, we did, we reflect on it more now, but all the mental things we were going through, through high school, that you don't even know that it's, you know, this mental stuff you're dealing with. It was just life, as they called it. As you reflect back, even now for a little bit, Mm -hmm. can you talk to a little bit about, about that? Just, man, the things that you had to deal with um, as you were pursuing your career, uh, in sports in high school? Yeah, I think it was, um, easier for all the reasons we kind of just talked about being in Reno. And Mm -hmm. so the amount of stuff on my plate was certainly different than y'all's experience in watching the doc, which made me appreciate my experience more, you know? So it's, I think, um, and that's probably with the directive of my parents of like, like, what are you complaining about having to do right now? Right. And then having right, right. an example of like, <laughs> yeah, um, you know, so having that perspective was, was like I said, really impactful on me. And, and, but even with that being said, we all have our own thing. And once we're, uh, it's hard to keep perspective, you know? And so mm-hmm. it's, mm-hmm. it's for me, it was identifying so much of who I was, was an athlete. And so to maintain that, and then knowing I didn't want to stay in Reno, that it was um, ways to to go somewhere else, I guess, too. And so those low stakes, not on making it or whatever, but was just um, a way out. And I think that's like a thing that um, most athletes can kind of tap into, no matter where you are, is like an opportunity to go somewhere to keep doing this thing you love. And it, it's a lot harder, you know, than people think to get that next jump and you make that jump. And it's just like, it smacks you. It's crazy. Like you think you're the best at wherever you are and you show up and it's just that times a thousand, you know? Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. And so, and and those stakes. So, so I guess like that's the stakes and that's like the mental pressure um, that certainly applies to now. It's like all the people that move to LA every year, that are ready, smarter, brighter, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, fresh ideas, uh, ready to take my spot at at that table. And it's the same thing in sports and the drafts every year where Mm. uh, bigger, faster, stronger is coming after your spot every single year. And so um, I think sports really equipped me to uh, take all the variables that that I can control Mm -hmm. out of the Mm -hmm. equation because I can't help it if my knee goes out but I know that I'll be the most prepared. I'll be the hardest worker, you know? And so to Mm -hmm. be able to control what you can control for me gave me direction, I think with that chaos Mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, Cause then, and it's been a big thing. Like I hit with my kids of if you can't do anything about it or change it, that worry is just slowing you down. Like why, if there's nothing to be done about it, it's happening one way or another. Like it's just extra weight that you're putting on yourself and slows you down with, um, being able to perform or concentrate or whatever that is that you're trying to accomplish. And so it's easier said than done for sure. Um, oh, yeah. Because it is distracting and it's like, um, it's constant pressure, but, um, that's been a thing I try and kind of, um, uh, consistently do, which is just control what I can. And, and especially this random, like in this business that I'm in, it's so subjective to taste. Like, yep. If it was yep. math, it's like, if I say two plus two is five, it's like, no, you're wrong. It's like, oh shit. Yeah, you're right. But <laughs> I say two plus two is four. And you're like, we don't think that's right. And it's like, <laughs> right. I mean, <laughs> but it's fake people in a fake place doing fake shit. So fake, yep. maybe it is five. I don't, you know? And so it's right. like this, this weird thing that you just really don't have control over. And so the more you try and kind of 
get a hold of it, the more frustrating it becomes, I think. And, and along with sports, it's like the more you try and control that are outside what you can do with other teammates, because you're trying to get four other people to lock into what you're trying to do. And it's hard. So um, just kind of maintain what you can control and pushing forward with that, I guess. You, you know, speaking to Will's question, I think one thing about, I mean, just how it's viewed, yeah. uh, even from uh, outside looking in, you know, we like like we'll say we 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 didn't even understand that it was a a mental thing yeah. for us to even process or go through. We just thought it was life, and it tomorrow, the next day is coming, and you you have to act accordingly. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So now yeah. I think today, kids, and not just kids, but every, uh, mostly society now, they if they're they can't process rejection mm -hmm. not being good enough for whatever and they i think that goes that if if they can't face the next day that's coming they go into a depression yeah. they go into a a a, a curl and you know saying all all they mind get to thinking all sorts of type of negative things yeah i think that's i think that's the 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 two things that spark it of, of because just you, if you think about it, we all, everybody on this earth, is gonna have some rejection, some yeah. pain, some depression, and tomorrow sure. is not gonna wait on us to be like, "Oh, you okay? Are you all right?" Because tomorrow is coming. You have to do this all over again tomorrow. And it's constant with them. Like I think you guys didn't have a blueprint, and we're in a lot yeah, of ways man. the first to kind didn't of have be no one to talk to, Jason. Way. Yeah. Like it's me and like, Will, me and yeah. Will didn't know like to at St. Joe's if we was feeling whatever throughout the day. That, oh, we have a counselor in the school. Right. You know, I feel kind of out of place out here. I'm not feeling good today. We didn't mm -hmm. we didn't know to go do none of that. Yeah, and and you guys like, did you feel like that weight of what you were doing at that time, or was it later that you realized the kind of impact, or did you feel like those cameras? It's almost like Instagram. <laughs> And <laughs> like all the shit before, but like live streaming kind of shit. Yeah, we will probably felt the weight because I was I was on his back too. I didn't I didn't have no weight. I was he was carrying me out there at St. Joe's, so I was just like freely just just being a freshman on the freshman like, team. He had to yeah. carry all the weight. Yeah. You know that's that's why I, was, I wanted to ask you that question, Jason, because you know I I did feel the weight at that time, and I felt the weight. And now I know for me it was a, it was a, it was a number of things you know you know I it was my family it was the dream that they were selling me you know it was mm -hmm. the possibilities uh, it was uh, the betterment I mean it was it was all of those things and then outside of that you had to play good so you know yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. you know, yes. you know all yeah. of the expectations before you even hit the floor and so we yeah. always like to ask our guests that question that you know just like Ag was saying it. It's it's we talk about it more openly now because it happens a lot more. People, kids and youth and athletes can express it more. Yeah. And so I, I think when we get a lot of the backstories behind it, I think it even opens the door up even more for younger athletes to say, hey, this this bothers me. You know, like, yeah, I, I still to this day, Jason, I don't know how you feel about this, but I still to this day. I never felt encouraged by a negative word. You know what I mean? Like, you know, your coach is like, yeah, yeah. they're stomping you. Yeah. You, you a dog this and you, yeah. why are you? And I'm like, that really didn't make me want to play harder. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, it's, it's like, like, I believe you. Like, right, I'm right. shitty. I believe you. <laughs> right. Because you're an adult and you know because you're a right. coach. So right. Right. I know. But it's hard because we're kit, I think, way more now. I can't even imagine with everyone has – a thumbs up like button on what you're doing and feels mm -hmm. this need and urge to weigh in on it in a way mm -hmm. that was so mm -hmm. different for us. Like people around you or that film crew, or for me, like friends and family, or whatever, were weighing in on it, but not the country and the world. And so your worth is suddenly determined in a weird way. Like how do you yeah. put that shield up to get past that negativity and still push forward? And it's like, um, and and I th I, I'm, I'm realizing, I think I just talked to my kids and like uh, posters from like the doctor's office where it's like the cat's like, hang in there. But like another thing I say, yeah. I say to them was just like, <laughs> uh, 
Like the only person that's going to stop you uh, from doing what you want to do is you. And so it, mm. it really is like addressing that, I think, which is yeah. everyone's going to have an opinion. But at the end of the day, like if you want to do something, like you're the person that's going to do it. And so it kind of doesn't matter what anyone says. If you believe it and are willing to put in that work, um, it's like all that noise, I think, that gets in the way of what we want to do. Like, I didn't go to school for film. Like, it makes no sense that I came down here to work in TV. Like, um, but I wanted to, you know, and luckily was had have parents that um, were smart enough to tell me all the reasons why I shouldn't come down right. here and do this. But also were supportive. Like, that's why you shouldn't. And it was just yeah. like the list. It was great. You know, and but if you want to, like we'll support you doing that. And so um I think it's that balance, yeah. Hey, it's funny, Will, you said that like you I don't I haven't been encouraged by a negative word. Can you imagine that it's in, great. In, in can you imagine that in Jason's world? He write a oh, script and go give it to a guy. Ah, I don't like this. Get this crap out of here. Oh, no oh okay, thank yeah. you. I'll, I'll go and rework it. <laughs> no one I think in this business ever probably is turning a script. And everyone's like, this is it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. <laughs> like, this is perfect right. as is. And if you're, to me, and it happens a lot, but like the arrogance to think also that a non subject like a subjective thing you can hand over and that it's perfect. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I just don't have the arrogance either. And so, because I, I acknowledge like what a director brings with the, wardrobe brings what mm -hmm. makeup hair like all these departments that are all the best of what they do right. what they bring to that it's not just that those pages that right. are, you know yep. that you can hold up and like this is it and uh maybe at the end of it i'll just come crashing down at like being like uh defending myself from all the feelings about <laughs> i hate this or you had to change this because right now yeah. it's just rolling off my back at some point maybe that'll come crashing down mm -hmm. but for now it's like um, just being able to like, um, prioritize what you want to do. And, and, and like you mm -hmm. said, the kids like today have so much noise around them. Yeah. Um, and so many people weighing in so much more opportunity than we had too. like, uh, it was, uh, like blown away to think that eighth graders were being like pulled to go visit schools. It was like, yeah. Oh shit. And then like, how can we help your family? It's like, Oh shit. And then like, and so I think it, in a lot of ways, probably started that trend because mm -hmm. it's widespread appeal like it's like yeah why are we pulling from reno when we can pull from the bay area we pull from texas mm -hmm. we can get some guards from new york we can get some guards from chicago and mm -hmm. you know and so it's like this this thing that i think like opened up the world in a big way at a time where luckily i kind of got through it when it was still small and a little bit protected and I, and uh mccarran was circling the city of reno and kept mm -hmm. me inside that. I think you guys, in a lot of ways, uh, kind of blew that up, which, and the difficulty, you have more eyes on you, but then you get so much more opportunity now to be discovered and to get these opportunities that maybe you wouldn't previously. So um, it's just really interesting how it's evolved. And I think like we, you guys in, in our age, were at the start of that shift yeah. in, in some yeah, way. That's, that's that um, double-edged yeah. sword. It, it's it's yeah. great to be the first, but you don't always get the rewards of being the first. So it's no, the double-edged sword. No. But, but, sure. but Jason, yeah. man, we got this thing we want to do with you, man. It's called Halftime. And we're going to hit you with some quick hitters before we jump into uh, your, your Hollywood life. So uh, <laughs> I'm gonna hit you with some. I'm gonna hit you with some questions. Ag gonna hit you with some questions. So let me jump this thing yeah. off with this one. I'm gonna say some shows, and you tell me which one that you are watching. Family okay. Feud or The Price Is Right. Uh, what's the third option? <laughs> <laughs> that is. We gonna move on. That is. <laughs> no, I feel like like I love I love the idea of like sitting down and watching the game show. That sounds like amazing but that's just not what life looks like right now like two kids and all the sports and all the stuff i'm trying to do with work and trying to be a decent guy you know it's just like it's there's so much i would love to sit down and watch both of those like back to back maybe but it's just yeah it just doesn't fit in right now i got you well then i'm gonna bring it home then make it yeah. look closer original <laughs> dynasty or the new dynasty it's interesting i, I think the original is kind of the first of that like shock and awe TV yeah. where it's like that first kind of, for me, what, you know, just, uh, for myself, uh, feeling like 
I got to like, tune in next fall and, and was not allowed to watch TV in, in my house growing up. Um, wow. So that's probably why I moved here. Like I showed them, but I, because my dad was a professor and was like, read, if you have free time, you read, if you're not reading, you're outside working on your game or whatever. So, mm-hmm. um, but dynasty was something that my, my mom was just into. So it was like, I guess I'm watching this, Absolutely. but oddly like, you know, so, but it was, yeah. So into those kind of plot twists. I like that. Yeah. It was like that for me too. It was like that for me too. Yeah. The original mission impossible or the $6 million man. Come on, Jason. <laughs> Come on, Jason. I mean, I feel like Cruz does his own stunts or wants everyone to think he does, which I respect. So I think that, I, don't, I mean, and the franchise alone. It's, huge. Like it's huge. A lot of them. But, but you, um, didn't, you didn't want to be the bionic man? I mean, yeah. Yeah. But, <laughs> but like I said, like I managed maybe my expectations. I got you. What I, could, like, I can't do that. So I guess I get why you. why even go there? Right, 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 right. I yeah, feel yeah. you on that one. I feel you on that one. All right, let's bring a little comedy into it. The Jamie Foxx right. show or Martin? Martin is so good, so sharp. Yeah, yeah. The Fox like did everything. Yeah, he I mean, did. I feel like if you loved like that sharp, quick, it's Martin. But if you wanted to watch someone just sit down on a piano and be captivating, or be dramatic, or be funny, or be Whatever, it's Fox. You know, it's just he's so versatile and well rounded. Uh, I think Fox. Triple I gotta threat. Say Fox. Yeah, yeah, triple threat, sure. man. Triple threat. Yeah. And my, my last one, man, Secession or Billions? Succession. Like, <laughs> he jumped right like, on that. Real quick. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, I, I think just, and Billions, I think, does it in a really, really great way as well. But uh, the ability to get you to root for and like, the most despicable, mean-spirited people on the planet mm-hmm. and feel for them and, like, root for them mm-hmm. as a writer is just so compelling and um, is such a difficult thing to balance and do. And that cast draws you in in a way where you feel for them. It's it's uh, it's really amazing. Yeah. I love that show. Billions is not good no more. It's, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Axe went to jail. Oh, got it. <laughs> they got, you know, Axe got, got it. They cut Axe. Well, it feels like that's like what they were building to, so I maybe don't have to watch it since you, you just said what happens in it. Right, right. right. <laughs> maybe I'll skip spoiler that. alert, spoiler alert, spoiler <laughs> yeah. alert. Jason, yeah. rank, rank these shows in order of your favorite. Okay. Narcos, Snowfall, Queen of the South, Top Boy, The Wire. I mean, The Wire, top. And Brandon McLaren, who you guys talked to, is a yep. very close Brandon friend of Jay. mine. Brandon J. Which yeah, makes right. me want to put Snowfall farther down. But it's, <laughs> but it's hard to. It's right, hard to do right. That. I would say that's second. And, and I like Queen of the South just because it was like, uh, I like stuff where um, it's out of the norm. And so the fact that it was yeah. a woman in a predominantly male-driven cartel yep lifestyle that she's yeah. unapol you know just like unapologetically uh who she is and uh doesn't back down from anybody i felt was really cool at a time where uh that's more and more important i think you know so um i think that's in there maybe because i don't remember the other ones <laughs> that's just my top three yeah that, the other ones with yeah. top boy and narcos and narcos kind of similar i think to why i like succession so maybe mm-hmm. those two mm-hmm. kind of fall around the same. Uh-huh. Uh, but I love just like the ability to kind of drop into a world that I don't know and feel yeah. that it feels authentic and you feel like you're just riding next to mm-hmm. someone that you can't imagine what that life is like, but it just pulls you in a really cool way. Who was your favorite character that you've written for? Not Brandon McLaren. <laughs> he's not very really difficult clear. on set very difficult no he's he's great like um it's interesting like and truly like someone like him is is like the best of it to me because it's someone who shows up prepared all the time and has real passion for what he's doing and you know i think a lot of times like anyone's com- not complaining but like having notes on something or asking about something that's kind of perceived as difficult um mm-hmm. but to me it's like it shows that you care about 
your performance and you want it to be what the writers were thinking, what the director has in mind. And so I think like, um, but he's someone who's like so professional, but um, um, Ellen Pompeo, who just like uh, mm-hmm. from Grey's was fantastic. Like that, that whole cast over there, um, Chandler, Kevin, like um, it, it's just that whole cast is amazing. But they turn around each week and, and make it feel compelling. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's such a great cast. Um, yeah, it's hard to pinpoint. I don't know. It's, it's, and me, like, I, I just love the process, I think. And so anyone that's like about that and not about drama and just about showing up and working hard, I'm with for sure. All right, Red Ranger, you're getting a lot of love today. Jason giving yeah. you a lot of love today. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for my, like, it looks like we got posters and hats. Like, I can't wait for my yeah. swag to show up. Oh, yeah, you yeah. You're going to get, you're gonna get a swag back. Out. I can't wait. Get a swag nice. bag. Yeah, that'll be nice. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. No, what, like, Jason, yeah. what are your three shows you are watching right now? If you have time, when you have time. Yeah, I think, um, like I said, uh, Succession, just in terms of just like studying how they craft their stories and, and how they, like, I love that twist and turns you don't see coming. And Euphoria, I feel like Ooh. it's just like, Okay. So visceral, like it, it. It's I like stuff that makes me feel like uncomfortable or happy mm-hmm. in an extreme way. And that show, it's just like you typically would cut out of a scene. And I feel like that show makes you sit there for another ten minutes through the rest of it, <laughs> where normally they would cut out. And it's just uh, that cast is so amazing, and just it was really I think informed the type of shows that I'm developing, um, where you can take some that traditionally you wouldn't like in succession and uh, make you root for them or euphoria and like really not sugarcoat what kids are maybe going through today right. and not shying away from that real ex- authentic experience because it's maybe objectionable or offensive mm-hmm. or whatever it is, but that's what they're dealing with. Um, you know, and so I like shows that approach that it, it, in that terms. I'm saying those like stand out for sure. I love that. I, I, how old are your kids? Uh, I just turned turned eleven and nine this past month. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I was gonna say I'm surprised that you didn't name a kids show because you know when you when you got you got young kids. <laughs> I mean, those are on such a loop. I mean, those. If yes. I liked any of those at the beginning, that's gone by now for sure. Like yes, yes those yes. like theme songs and like one liners. That's all we hear now. So it's like. Right. And just finding TV time, right? Like, so, you know, you have a full house. It's just finding time to sit down and watch. And, like, I'm a sports guy, so, like, that's a little bit way to unwind. And it's hard to watch shows with thought and, like, turn off the brain and just kind of enjoy it without trying to figure out what they're doing or where they're going or um, trying to break it down. So, like, sports for me is, like, that that kind of uh, an escape. That's 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 where you, yeah. you you full time parents are still at. See, you know, yeah. uh, minds are gone and grown. So that's yeah. that's, that's you and AG. So, uh, yeah. mm-hmm. a director you like to write for, and an actor you like to write for. Um, I like writing for Kevin McKidd at Grays, hmm. uh, okay. who directs a ton of those episodes of the show and is obviously on the show. Um, but I love his approach. Uh, having done so many still pushes to find creative ways to shoot a hallway that's been shot for 18 years. That's the right. you know, so it's really, uh, we move the camera in really interesting ways and, uh, was just like, so, so collaborative to work with and, and, and for, and, and kind of molding it as it goes. Um, mm. he was always really, really great. And it's a handful of, of, um, men and women kind of, that fall into that uh, for me, I think, after. Yeah, because you know what? I'm still trying to figure out how the hell on Graceland, the outside world don't know about this compound. <laughs> I mean, they're very, they're very good at what they did. They're very, like, what the uh, hell is going over at, at that beach supply. house? <laughs> <laughs> and what's with all the guns kind of going yeah, in that Right, like, right. Uh, I'm just walking and- my dog. <laughs> I'm just walking my dog, man. Just... <laughs> Here's the thing: like you guys asked for like my favorites, but like I have to go back into the world and then right. get asked why I, they weren't someone I mentioned. Like that's like I, I still have to 
go back out there and like right right they be like hey jason i seen you on the og podcast man what the fuck's up with that man (laughs) i can't i can't name that but yeah (laughs) okay let's jump on your music jason who you listening to right now on your playlist um i like old stuff like like old hip-hop like like, your 90s 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 hip-hop for sure 90s is the best hip-hop and even like um like 50 like i like that like in the 2000s, just like more of that old, older stuff, I guess, which yeah. is funny because you'll be out like somewhere and you'll hear it now again. It's like, uh-huh. hits you how old we are, or it's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's ironic now that you're playing this. It's not that it's good, you know? So it's like, it's funny that stuff comes back around, but, um, and then just like background, like I like back, like I'll, I'll write to music, but it's like nothing that is too distracting. Oh, okay. Um, throwing like some lo fi beats, just like, um, nice hotel music probably mm-hmm. you know just that that's in the background um uh so i'll do that a lot and uh yeah, I, there's like a that. lot there's a lot of olivia rodrigo in that like both mm-hmm. my daughters play um mm-hmm. piano and guitar and so i play guitar and so that's on repeat in the house a lot um olivia rodrigo so, so they're keeping me hip so let me tell you what i just that's heard important. ag uh-huh. He writing songs. He got an album coming out shortly. That's all I heard oh, him say. Sure. Uh, for right, sure. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. I'm playing. Yeah. I'm writing. Yeah. And, and he's recruiting his kids with him. That's what I heard. I'm waiting for them to right. take over. Right. I'm tired. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. Jason, give me your two most memorable theme songs from a TV show. Like Cheers. It was all like when Cheers. And then Seinfeld. Seinfeld for me was just like. I feel like you heard that, the bum, bum, bum. It just you just knew it was gonna be a good time, like, and um, just yeah, I, I like those two. <laughs> let me let me tell you the one that I love the thing. I love the TV show, but I hate it when it used to come on. Uh, Mash because it, yeah, it was always yeah. on 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 <laughs> Sunday night, and you knew it was time All to right. go to school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, it came on after the news, right? <laughs> Right, yeah. Um, the the A team was dope. I thought that mm. and, like and like the Fall Guy. Like I'm like a like uh, grew up. I think with all those kind of car driven shows. Knight Rider was dope. Like and so I think that like, kind of probably like, a huge like like love cars and automobiles. You know. And so I think maybe just growing up with all those. But I feel like those intros were so good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Fall Guy and Knight Rider and all those. Yeah. <laughs> Knight Rider. Bella on the bell. I'm the gold of my era. I've been a trending topic. I'm as fly as a feather. My pocket's macroscopic. See, with time, I get better. I'm always in the action, kid. Know I got it locked from Chicago where the toughest live. Concrete jungle, earn my stripes on the pavement there. You make it here, then you can make it anywhere. No comparison. Your game is embarrassing. No one can touch me. I'm all for going there again. Yeah, I think I'm balling like I'm Will Gates. I'm hoop dreaming, trying to fight against a sealed fate. More faith, think I'm balling like I'm Martha AG. I'm box office in one day, they gon' have to pay me. Yeah, I think I'm balling like I'm Will Gates. I'm hoop dreaming, trying to fight against a seal fate. More faith, think I'm balling like I'm Martha AG. I'm box office in one day, they gon' have to pay me. I'm a hoop Dreams the Podcast, an Unlearning Network production. Written and produced by Arthur AG, Will Gates, Matt Hoffer, with audio engineering from Matt Savage. For more episodes, check us out at www.unlearningnetwork.com. Gotta be a dog to survive in this cold weather. Ice in my veins, no need for a warm sweater. I'm coming for it all, best believe I won't let up, yeah. Hey, I think I'm balling like I'm Will Gates. I'm hoop dreaming, trying to fight against a sealed fate. More faith, think I'm balling like I'm Martha Agee. I'm box office in one day, they gon' have to pay me. Yeah, I think I'm balling like I'm Will Gates. I'm hoop dreaming, trying to fight against a sealed fate. More faith, think I'm balling like I'm Martha Agee. I'm box office in one day, they gon' have to pay me. <laughs>